Hi, this is Konstantin from FastGen. And today I want to show you how you can authenticate your users in your WeWeb project using the FastGen user management feature. This will allow you to create a sign up and a login page on your WeWeb project and then authenticate your users using FastGen. To start off, we simply have a blank project in FastGen as well as a blank project in WeWeb. So the only thing to set off on FastGen that we need to do is we need to allow signups. This is disabled uh, per default for security reasons. But now that we have that, let's just head over to WeWeb straight away. So to set up your authentication with FastGen, what I want you to do is to go to Plugins, Authentication, and then you will see a bunch of authentication providers. Uh, for now, let's choose Token-Based Auth. Also, it's important to mention that this method does not only work with WeWeb, uh, so it's agnostic of what kind of uh, front-end builder you use when using Token-Based Auth. So the first thing you need to do is you need to take note of your FastGen project subdomain. That is the domain you used when creating your project. If you don't know it anymore, you can just create a simple endpoint and then check out your subdomain here. In my case, this would be auth-tutorial. So once we have that, uh, go back to WeWeb. We want to select auth bearer token as this is the authentication method that we are using. And then for your first endpoint, you want to use the following. So your subdomain.fastgenapp.com slash v1 slash meta slash users slash me. Uh, this will be an endpoint that can return your user data if you call it with the authentication token of one of your users. So we don't need the refresh token endpoint for now, as we will be adding that in one of our workflows later. You can select a redirection page that the user gets redirected when they are not signed in. So let's just say redirect into our homepage for now. And uh, if you have user roles, you can manage that here. But for now, we'll go with a single user role. And that is it for now. So we have set up our token-based auth. So now that we've configured the plugin, let us add the relevant pages. So uh, first off, we will need a login page. We will need a sign-up page. And the neat thing about WeWeb is that you don't need to build this section yourself. You can simply go to add an element, go down to the authentication section, and then for the login page, pull in the sign in section. Let's do the same for our sign up. Add new section, authentication, sign up. To keep it simple, we'll uh, kick out the name here. You can leave it in. Um, then you just have to add that to our body field when calling the API. Um, I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so now that we have that, let us configure our workflow. So this is essentially what happens after the user submits this signup form here. Before we do that, um, please go into view mode and enter username and password to so we will be able to test our sign up right after we create the workflow for it let's choose some password and now click on the form container so we can configure our workflow so this is essentially what uh, what happens after the user presses submit so first up, off, we need to call our signup endpoint. 
and I assume we need to enable the REST plugin first. So go to plugins, data sources, REST API, press add, and now it hopefully should show up. It does, perfect. So the first thing we wanna do is check our documentation, what kind of endpoint we need to call. And this is the one. So your project domain dot fastgen dot com slash auth slash sign up. Uh, one note here, we will be deprecating the fastgen.com domain for our auth endpoints at some point. So please use fastgenapp.com already to make sure that um, this will not impact you in the future. So let's copy that over. And my project subdomain is called auth tutorial. Please replace that with whatever your subdomain is called. And then fastgen app slash auth slash sign up. This looks good. Let's check what else we need. So we need to set at least two headers. One is RID, third party email password. One is content type, application, JSON. And then there's the third one that I want you to set, which is FG auth mode buddy. What this optional header parameter does is it will return your session token in the buddy instead of trying to uh, write it into the cookie, which is what we need for this auth uh, example with VWeb. So let's add our first header. What was it? RID, third party email password. Next one is content type. application json and then the third uh, parameter fg auth mode body to get our tokens back in the body okay so next let's configure our body go to raw body and let's just copy what our endpoint expects here So one note here, if you choose to keep the user's first name and last name, you need to add that in here as well when submitting um, your call to our endpoint. So what we need to do here is we need to replace two variables, two of our placeholder variables, because obviously we want the email that the user inputs into the form field in the front end, as well as the password that the user chooses. So let's delete our placeholder here and go to variables and select email input value. That looks good. Next, remove the password placeholder, same thing. And you can already see next to the variables, it shows me what I actually inputted a few steps earlier in the form. So this should show whatever you just typed in. Okay. And then as a last step, I want you to enable proxy request to bypass course issues to make sure you're not running into any course issues. You can give it a name if you want. Let's say sign up and get auth token. And now we can test it. So press test. And let's see. Okay, status 200, data. What did we get back? Access token, refresh token. Perfect. So now our user is signed up. If you go back to FastGen user management, you should see our signed up user. Great. But we're not done here yet because there are a couple of additional steps that we need to take in order for our state to be managed properly so that our application knows, okay, this user is actually signed up with the current uh, session token. So for that, add another step, store token, and another one, which is fetch user. And now let's configure those. So for store token, we want to retrieve the access token that our endpoint returned and the refresh token that our endpoint returned. So let's first get the access token. 
uh, for this, we want to go to the, our little bolt again and then get the data from our first action, which we just executed. Go to data, select access token, and that looks good. And now do the same for our refresh token again. Result data refresh token. Perfect. We can execute this one as well. It executed perfectly. And you should see now if you go to the variables tab up here that we successfully set our access and refresh token that our first call returned. Now, last but not least, you need to add the fetch user uh, action. Here, you don't need to configure anything because this action will call the endpoint that we added when we added the authentication plugin in the first step. So this will essentially call this URL with the data that we just received here. Let's test that as well. And this looks good. So our user is now authenticated. Um, and this is the return from our user slash me endpoint. As a last step, let's redirect the user to a page of your choosing after uh, the successful sign up. So let's add the change page action and select the page where you want to redirect the user to. And that is our sign up page done. So now let's head over to our login page to configure it here. So what we'll be doing here is extremely similar to what we did before. First off, go to your elements and click on a form container element. And then again, lightning bolt top right to jump into our workflow. In here, we'll do pretty much exactly the same what we did with the signup endpoint. So first add a REST request, then input the correct endpoint. So this time it is sign in again with your project subdomain and fastgenapp.com. So let's paste that here. And we're going to add the same headers as we did before. So again, RID, third party email password, and content type application JSON with the addition of FG auth mode body to receive our token in the body of our response. So RID, third party email password. Content type. application JSON and FG auth mode body. Again, let's configure our body. To do that, we will once again copy the object here, paste it inside the formula builder and then once again we want to replace the email input value with the dynamic variable and the same goes for the password okay this looks good uh, last but not least enable the proxy again so we're not running into any course issues okay so now that we have that, let us quickly add our username and password for the user that we have registered before. If you click on the formula just to check, you now should be able to see the values you've inputted here or just check the variables up here and test it. Okay, looks good. So our request got a positive response 
and we received the access and the refresh token. So now we will simply repeat the steps we did with our signup endpoint. So first add store token and grab the variable from the response of our first call. Then we want to fetch the user and add a redirect at the end. Okay, let's test it. Storing the token seemed to have worked. Fetching the user works and the redirect should work as well. And this is how you build your user authentication with WeWeb and FastGen. There are many more things you can do. So for example, um, it would be wise to validate the email of the users that you sign up. To do that, you can simply go to the settings and configure our workflows so that you add an email provider and send the verification request to the user. Uh, once the user verifies this email, you will see a check mark here. And yeah, that is it. I hope uh, this helped. Let us know if there are any additional questions you have regarding off, and we'll make sure to cover them in another tutorial. Thank you very much and happy building.